friends and welcome to the homestead. If this is the first time you're visiting our channel, I want to explain to you a very warm welcome. If you've been here before, welcome back. If today is your birthday, I want to wish you a very happy birthday. So today we're going to tackle another organization project. As you can see, our plastic set is uh, in a state of disarray. It is very useful. We, we store a lot of things here, but when we need to access things, it is a little more difficult because like all those uh, plastic sets, it's, it's really just a, a flat space, right? We, you don't have any organization in it. And the organization you can buy is very expensive and very limited. I don't know if you can see that uh, little self there. I mean, that little self is $45 and, and really can do very little, right? Mm -hmm. So it is not cost effective to spend a lot of money on, on uh, little things like that. So the first uh, order of business would be for us to take everything out and uh, evaluate the space and start building. So stick around and we're going to show you how to organize a plastic set which you might have in your property to get more uh, utility out of it. So from, from what we just saw you, we are going to end up with this today, after some sweaty work, of course, right? Yeah. But this is our goal today, and uh, stick around and we'll show you how we achieved it. So we, we use this as our automotive uh, cabinet, and because we use it as our automotive cabinet, we have managed to spill some automotive oil here, and the best way to, to deal with that is use cat litter which is what you see here on the on the floor just a little bit of tips and tricks in this episode right mm -hmm. and this will absorb the oil and then you can uh, sweep it up and toss sweep it, it up and take it where you need to take it all right excellent so we're making some progress we can actually see this little corner we've still got quite a bit to go uh, and we're going to keep working to get this cleaned up so as you can see we have quite a lot of stuff in that little set surprising amount of stuff actually the little set and the difficulty was not that we had a lot of them is that we couldn't reach them all right so we hope that this uh, new adventure in building will allow us to organize things so they are easily accessible plus I need to bring my my tool chest here and the way we were before it didn't fit hopefully it will fit now hopefully so we're going to continue you want to show them how big now it looks sure I don't remember how big it is, it's like a, an 8 by 7 or something like that. Oh. I don't remember the dimension of the set. I think it's 8 by 7. And we inherited it with the house, we didn't purchase it. I'm not a big fan of plastic sets and if we build a garage here, probably we'll have to move it. Right? I mean, one of the things we're talking about is in this space building a garage. Mm -hmm. So if we do that, this will have to go. Okay. So there might be another emptying in our future. Not immediate future, however, you know, down, down the road. So as you can see, it is nice and spacious. Am I even visible? Yeah. And uh, we're going to start building now, so stick around. So here we're back from the orange store, and we purchased, what, 12, uh, three by, uh, three by fours? Two by threes. Two by threes, sorry, and uh, three pieces of OSB, right? Mm -hmm. And these are going to be translate, transformed, not translated, they're going to be transformed to our new organization system. Okay. So let's start. So we are kind of, uh, I don't know if the word is fortunate, but we have two uh, Chop sauce, right? Mm -hmm. And one of them is attached in our shop, and it works well because we use tops and things like that. But for situations like this, we have this that it is a portable. So you don't have to have two, but in our case, we do. Yep. And this is actually the first saw I bought. It is a Ryobi, as you can see, it's the blue. Mm -hmm. All right, let's cut the other piece. So these first two pieces that we're cutting are for the first initial shelf sides yes. or supports. 
Actually, should, let's try fit first to make sure this is the right size. So we've laid out those two long pieces along the bottom edge to make a measurement uh, for the cross support on here. We have that marked and we're now at the saw. We need to get another one. Okay, I'm just checking. Now, because we have an air nailer, we are using an air nailer, but you can use screws, right? You sure can. This the just air makes, nailer makes it a little easier. And faster. And faster. You could wear ear protection while you're doing that, because it's and, super And fast. eye protection, because despite what the, the wizard likes to tell us, this thing does like to throw things at us. It doesn't. It does. It just hit me in the chest. Is this, let me ask you, stop. Is this the configuration you want? Yeah. I, I just moved it there. Yeah. They, they, they. Okay, this is slightly short. So these are just time. for supports. And again, so this is the frame for the shelf. It will be like that. Um, just flat and then there will be the OSB cut to size that go over it that actually create the platform. Okay. See that? That's what flies off of it. If it smacks your eye, that's a problem. Yes. So here we are and uh, this will be our base and we are going to build up from that. So we've made our, ver our horizontal pieces, and as you can see them here, they are very much like framing walls, right? Does that remind you of this? Mm -hmm. And uh, it is really the same process. We are going to see them with OSB, and we might make another one. We, don't, we haven't decided yet. We might make another one or another shelf, but uh, we're going to start the seating process, and we'll be right back so with we're you. We're using OSB for the, the shelving, right? And we are going to have to cut it to, to our correct depth, which is 10 inches. So we're getting two pieces out of each of the sheets. Right, so I think we need a couple of more, actually. Okay. Uh, out too fast. 
I don't know what the heck did there. Huh? You pulled out too early. That's horrible. That I saw it on camera. He pulled out too early. And that's all. I think they are not straight. Now. Give me this. I think that it's it needs to come me, toward you. It is you. You're, you're going like this with your hand as you're going down on it. Because mm -hmm. you're trying to reach across the thing. Fine, you do. Let's try again. Well, it's closer to you now. So here we're using some leftover pieces that were left by the previous owners of the house. We're going to use those for the upright supports for the shelving unit. And we do that because wood is $9 million a piece. Right. <laughs> and so what are these? These, these are uh, spindles for the deck. Spindles for a deck. And so the ends are tapered. And we're cutting... And we're cutting all those ends off to make them square. And we're going to use them for the supports. Again, these are plenty strong for what we need. Okay, so we have a few more to do and move forward with them. Good enough? I think so. Okay. So, the spindles, we cut off the ends to make them square. Now we're cutting uh, six of them in half, right? Yeah. To make the upright supports. Will it be easier to be your side? No, you it won't be. Flush? I'm going to be flush, but I want that to be over there. Why? Because it's easier to hold it over there. Right. Let me come here away a little bit. Okay. Yeah. You want me to... Hold on, hold on. I'm going to come over here and hold on. It's coming your way. Your way. Okay. Ready? Good catch. So this is the frame that supports for the, the shelves. This is the vertical support for the horizontal shelves. Right. Perfect. So here's our uh, first dry feed. We have finished seeding the, the bottom shelf and we have the two supports. We're going to have another one, uh, necessarily needs to be in the middle, but just want to make sure that we're not going to have a sagging problem, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to get to make a third one and then we're going to, going to be able to attach Myself. Right. Alright. So what we just did here was put nails in from the underside of the shelf. We've got the bottom bottom shelf installed. We've got the supports installed, three of them per shelf, and then came in from the underside here to attach those. 
to the upper shelf. Okay. So we're using a little different construction for our second shelf. And as you can see, we have the two sides here. And we use the first side to mirror the other side because, again, consistency is much better than accuracy, right? Mm -hmm. And we didn't have to measure anything. I mean, we measured the first time or approximately look where we liked it. Right. <clears throat> but again, it's much more important to be consistent than to be right. perfect. And so these are the two sides. Right. And then we'll make the fronts by right. joining them together at the appropriate distance, which we've already cut the pieces for. Yes. Yes, we did. And we are going to, to show you that shortly. So here we are with our last shelf for the unit, which was very specifically made so our lawnmower can go underneath it. So it was a very uh, unique piece. We built it a little different than the one before because the one before we ended up having a little too complex of a way to support between them. And because we didn't want to waste a lot of space in the little uh, shed. Right. So we built it in a way that uh, allow us to maximize the weight and also maximize the wood we have. Mm -hmm. We use the least amount of wood we could use. Right. So we have the structure that will hold shelves, um, similar to the other ones, but we kind of did it a di in a different way, as you said, um, and we're going to make the tops custom to the dimension that will sit on top of these squares here. Well, they're not really squares, but yeah. All right, so we're going to put it in place and we'll be right back with you. Did you go through? Did you check it? I don't see it anywhere. I'm asking if it cracked or not. No, it didn't crack. Grab. I think it did grab because I'm not holding it anymore. And she can't feel the nail from any direction. So what we're doing now is just So these are cross supports to support these shelves. Because these shelves are much wider than this. Yeah, yeah. And so likewise with this top one. I'm ready. I'm ready. Woo. There is nothing coming on here. Yeah, uh huh. Little lower. So we're just using some brad nails to attach these and the reason why we've switched from using nail nails uh, is because of the construction of this. There are nails on the side here and we don't want to uh, put pressure or, or downward motion against those nails and potentially move the shelf itself. And we don't really need strength. I mean, this is just to prevent it. The yeah, it's just to hold them in place so they don't move around. Plus, we want to use all our precaution tools. You know, the, the nailer nailer, the brad nailer, the palm nailer. Yeah. Even the manual nailer. It's called we the have, Yeah, we've used them all today. We did use them all. So here we are, okay. we've got uh, the two more shelves in place. We're getting ready to put the brad nails in just to, again, to hold them there. It's not structural, it's just to keep them in place. And again, for our purposes, we didn't put a, a shelf in the bottom because we want to park our one more there. So this one is open, unlike this one, which has the shelf because this is the landmark for us. Yeah. Even though this is not structural, it does keep itself, you know? Yeah, because they hold, they're held in place and so it just kind of helps hold the whole structure at a uh, in a good spot. So here we are and the two cells are completed. Again, this self is constructed different than the other one 
for two reasons. The first one was that we needed to park our lawnmower underneath it, so it, it could not have a, a base. And the other is that we wanted a little wider, little bigger shelves mm -hmm. to accommodate other kind of uh, storage, right? Mm -hmm. But both of them are very nice and sturdy, and I think that will serve us very well. <clears throat> we also wanted to conserve the the height in the middle, so we can put our ladder here. Right. Because we have a tall ladder, because otherwise it wouldn't fit. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> the next step will be to start putting things in. Yeah. And I guess vacuum or vacuum. We need to sweep this. We need to sweep this out now that the litter's had a chance to absorb this oil. Okay. And uh, so we're going to do that. that. That'll be right back. So we've been using this as automotive and uh, garden set. And ever since we moved here, I didn't really have the space for my automotive tools. We have the good working tools in the shop, but we brought this here. We think it will fit now, right? Mm -hmm. And as you can see, we have started already organizing. It looks much, much better than it did before. Oh yeah. So we're going to continue and we're going to show you the progress. Okay. So here's our finished space and we actually get, we can see the floor. Yeah, we can walk in there without tripping over stuff, which is pretty cool. Still is a small space and we still have plenty of storage as you can see, we didn't use all of it. Yeah, there's still a whole open shelf there, a partial shelf there, and technically there's a little room up there. These there's are, room here. yeah, there's a little bit of room, but mostly this one is full. But definitely an improvement over our previous. And we fit more stuff. Like right, that. I mean, we brought this huge... Uh, <laughs> the huge cabinet over. And as, as mentioned, here's where the lawnmower is going to live. It, it goes underneath that shelf. And to get to it, all we'll need to do is move these couple of gadgets in. Where before we had to empty half of the place. Right, and of course there was a giant mountain of stuff up on top of this. And this is just using what we have, right? I mean, it is right. not ideal yet, but it is definitely an right. improvement over what we have. Yeah. So... For under $80, we drastically increased the utility of this space, right? Mm -hmm. And if we were to buy, even with the price of wood these days, if we were to buy uh, selling, selling units are fairly expensive. Yes, they are. So we would have spent more than that. Mm -hmm. We would probably be less sweaty, I don't know, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> I don't know, in the North Carolina uh, humidity. But definitely, we didn't have this space before. Mm -hmm. No, we did not. And every time we were picking something, something else was falling, and it was mm -hmm. it was really a mess. And we, I think, this is a much, much better situation. Yeah, and you know, like I said, you can actually stand in there now. There's room, so that's good. So we hope you enjoyed this episode, organi organizing small spaces. And if you did, would appreciate a thumbs up. If you didn't, hit the other button twice. Share, like, subscribe. Let us know what else you might want to see in our channel. Get vaccinated if you've not done so, put your masks on, and wash your hands, so you're going to be safe to watch another one of our episodes. From Dr. Wizard, Mrs. Wizard, Alpida, and the Urban Homesteading Channel, stay safe, friends. <laughs>